Let's say you'd like to send a secret message from yourself to a neighbor who lives down the street. You write the message down on a sheet of paper, put the paper into a box, and hand the box to a messenger who delivers the box to your neighbor. Your neighbor then opens the box and reads your message. You might worry, though, that this protocol for sending messages is not very secure. In particular, when you hand the box to the messenger, you worry that the messenger might not be so trustworthy and could easily open the box and read your secret message. Now, you could lock the box before handing it to the messenger so that the messenger wouldn't be able to open the box and see what's inside. But that doesn't quite work, since once your neighbor receives the locked box, they have no way to open it. After all, they need the key. Asking the messenger to deliver the key to your neighbor defeats the whole point. The messenger could then use the key to open the box and eavesdrop on your communication. So you decide that you need some protocol that will let you send a secret message to your neighbor that doesn't involve giving the messenger the keys to unlock that message. This is where the three-pass protocol can come in handy. A protocol that lets you send a locked message to your neighbor without requiring handing the messenger the key. As the name might imply, this protocol involves passing the message back and forth through the messenger three times. In the first pass, you place the message in the box and lock it with your own key. You give the messenger the box, but hold on to your key, so the messenger can't access what's inside of the box. When the messenger delivers the box to your neighbor, your neighbor can't open the box either. But that's okay. The protocol's not over yet. We've only completed one pass. In the second pass, your neighbor adds their own lock to the box, locked with their own key. Now, the box has two locks on it, and your neighbor gives the box back to the messenger. The messenger delivers the box back to you, still unable to peek at your message since the box is now doubly locked. And now, in this third pass, you unlock your lock from the box and hand the box back to the messenger to deliver to your neighbor. But that's okay. The box is still locked with your neighbor's lock, so your message is still secure. When your neighbor receives this box at the end of the third pass, they can use their own key to unlock the box and read the message, all without the messenger ever having the ability to peek at the communication. This protocol works for a few reasons. To highlight one in particular, it works because it's possible to remove locks from the box in any order. So you can remove your lock before your neighbor removes theirs. In a digital world, there are encryption techniques that work like this too, such that if you encrypt a message and your neighbor encrypts the result, you can remove your encryption first before your neighbor removes theirs. In other words, the encryption is commutative. The eavesdropping messenger at this point, though, is getting frustrated. Despite their best efforts to intercept your message, the three-pass protocol seems to make it impossible. But then, the messenger gets an idea, and realizes a vulnerability of this protocol, a vulnerability present in many protocols for sending messages through a third party. The next time you try to initiate the three-pass protocol to send a message to your neighbor, the messenger puts their plan into action, and the messenger decides not to deliver the box to your neighbor at all. Instead, the messenger attaches their own lock to the box and delivers it right back to you. When you receive the box, it looks like your neighbors attach their lock to the box. So you, following the protocol, unlock your lock and hand the box back to the messenger. But now the messenger has a box which only has a single lock, their own. The messenger can now unlock the box and read the message inside. This kind of vulnerability is called a man-in-the-middle attack, and it shows up all over the place in computer security. So think about it, and we'll leave you with this question. What would you change about this protocol to feel confident that you could send a message to your neighbor without the messenger being able to read it?
there's no one right answer. But it's worth thinking about, whenever a malicious messenger might be involved, how you can be sure that your communication is secure.